it is currently 8.50 French time in the morning. Um, we are camping at a place um, on the Seine River. It's near Rouen. Let's just back up a whole little bit here. I'm currently in Bangkok right now, halfway across the world, miles away from France, miles away from London, um, to do a little bit of explaining about this video and about this trip. Um, this isn't a vlog, as you can already see by the time frame down there once you've clicked. This is like a long, long film. If you don't want to watch it or if you haven't got the time, then click off right now. If you want to hear about how two guys got from London to Bordeaux in five days, four nights, that's just under 1,500 miles on two motorcycles, then carry on watching. We're not really ready, are we, Jack? Hi, Phil. Hi, YouTube. Cliffs of Dover, White Cliffs of Dover, which very, very famous name. It is currently 8.50 French time in the morning. Get the tent down. Camping, like genuinely, like, I was so worried. And we're camping to save money, obviously. Otherwise we'd be staying in nice hotels. But I didn't realize like how easy it was gonna be to set up the tent and how easy it was gonna be to get an alright night's sleep. Like, I slept pretty well. How was your night's sleep? <laughs> yeah. Now that's a subject. I slept okay. I didn't sleep too bad. No? This cute little breakfast place right in the town next to where we were camping and they've got about I don't know I want to say about 70 80 different varieties of tea what does Jack go for English breakfast it's arrived um, no less than 10 seconds ago and I couldn't even get a shot of his one come for our first stop of the day we've been riding now approximately since 10:20. So that's, we've done three hours. If you don't know what bikes we have while we've stopped, I'm gonna go through a little tour if you don't watch the Wales vlogs, which I will link in the description below. Me and Jack have only ever been on one other trip together on our bikes and that was to Wales. A year before this, exactly a year ago, pretty much, give or take a month, we went for three days, or four days and three nights, can't remember exactly, and we went motorcycling through Wales. The roads were phenomenal, very different to what we saw in France. We saw the mountains, we went through Snowdon, we went through the Brecon Beacons. That was a little baby trip compared to what we were taking on now. Jack got a brand new, basically, one year old, 2017 plate Ninja 650. This is my bad boy, Honda CBF 500, which does me well in the city. Only new additions for this trip is I've got these mirrors, because I don't ride with mirrors in the city. Um, stupid, I know, but it's better for filtering. Um, and I have got this new top box. I've got a hell of a lot of stuff on this trip. Um, I'm not going to admit the most embarrassing thing, which everyone who was on this trip will know, um, but vital, vital items of clothing. You can probably get at what I'm getting to now, which I desperately needed. But I also forgot SIM cards for my cameras, so I can film anything on this camera for a while, and I also couldn't film anything on my GoPro until the second day. But we made a little stop and I managed to get my SIM card. Success! Wasn't even that expensive. And then day two was so much better than day one in terms of riding. Still not the best roads for motorcycles, but we were popping in and out of little towns, beautiful villages that had churches and a few hundred people living in them, smaller than the hometown I grew up in. And then after all of that riding, we finally got to the second stop, day two, which was with my cousins. We're here at the campsite, um, day two. Day two's been a lot better um, in terms of roads and in terms of everything else. Um, the reason we came to this campsite specifically is because my cousins are on holiday here. Meet the Fanti clan. This is the runt of the family. Hello. He's called Marco. How are you? I'm good, how are you? You look very tanned. I am. That's my mum's sister, Magdalena. Wave. Wait, you're not in focus. Wait. <laughs> oh, there this you go. This is going all over the internet. <laughs> anyway, and this is our setup. We've got our two bikes here. 
tent is already set up in about 10 minutes, not too bad. After riding on the bikes all day, I cannot tell you how refreshing it was to jump in this pool. And I don't know if you've ever had this, but like if you've been on holiday with your brothers or your sisters, um, my cousins are like brothers to me. But jumping back in that pool with them, messing around, I turned into a kid again for a brief 15, 20 minutes. It was a lot of fun. They'll argue that I'm always a bit of a kid, but anyway. <laughs> Oh, good morning, Jack. How did you sleep? Yeah. Yeah. I tell you what, you're very lucky that I don't sleep well anyway. But we're getting there, we're packing up. Everything is nearly good to go. Look who it is. The rogue one. I'm on a vlog. Can't believe it. Say hello. Hello. We're parting ways now. I always say hello to myself because I know I'm the only person watching. Oh, that's very hard. Like, I've, I've got, got more viewers views. than two people. He got a thousand views on the video. Oh. I've got 6.7 thousand views on my Shanghai one. 6.7? Wow! Go to Shanghai again, my guy. Yeah, I need to go crash my bike in Shanghai. Day three was by far the best day of riding in terms of motorbike roads throughout the entire trip. We went through all these B roads, basically avoided all the toll roads. We stopped at this chateau. What, what did you say was up there? It's like, it's like castle looking house. Did you see the castle? Huh? Mate, it's fucking big. That's what, I'm gonna look it up on my phone. That's like a chateau. And it was the best roads. We went all along the coast, windy, twisty roads. We made loads of different stops to get photos. This is Jack's face when he massages his head after wearing his helmet for too long. Do it one more time. Uh, you can't. Oh, actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah, now it's gonna come back. Or oh, not. We've arrived now at um, third campsite, third day. Bill, help me, Tinder. No. Um, Help me very to... nice ride today, huh? Very good getting down yes. here. All through the vineyards, through the regions of Bordeaux, um, came all the way down the coast. It was a gorgeous ride. Like, we've been riding five and a half hours and it's felt like two. Um, very hot and sweaty now. This is our little area. Got our bikes here. They've got a proper massive swimming pool with a diving board as well. This is ours to do what we like with. So after we set up the tent, we had a difficult decision to make. We were absolutely shattered. We had just set up our tent. We could have easily just eaten in the hotel bar, um, had a beer, got in the pool and then gone to sleep. But we were only an hour away from Bordeaux. Bordeaux, we had to go to Bordeaux. Come in for a little ride from our campsite. It's only taken about an hour. Um, I'm looking at an arm that has no watch on now. Um, it's eight o'clock, dead, and we're in Bordeaux. This is, this is Bordeaux, the town. And we're right on the river. Look at this. We're gonna go for a walk along the river and I'll show you a bit more in a moment. And we've come for dinner down one of these beautiful cobbled streets. Hello there. Dinner has arrived. I've got roasted chicken. Cool, just gone for the duck. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
Can I get a big pack? portion of fries? No, 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 no. And after that incredible meal, best meal of the trip. Uh, was it the best meal of the trip? Anyway, finally got back to our tent. It's last thing at night. We're at the campsite. Um, got back from Bordeaux. We've got a long ride ahead of us tomorrow. This is a little segment. I don't know where this happened in the trip, whether it was day two or day three or day four, I can't remember. But we did our good deed for the month, in my opinion here. We came across this car completely sloped into a ditch. Upon stopping, we pulled over. Oh, I haven't mentioned this yet. Me and Jack on this trip, as well as the previous trips we've done before, had a comm system so we could talk to each other the entire time we were on the motorbikes. Imagine having a permanent phone call going on while you're in a car or while you're on a bike. It was fantastic. It's vital when you're on a trip like this. Upon stopping, I found out that the guy was incredibly drunk and like steaming, steaming drunk. Obviously he pulled the car into a ditch. His wife slash mother slash whoever the lady was was just sitting next to it smoking a cigarette, giving up all hope. We stopped and um, didn't know what to do. Then after that, a load of other biker kids stopped on mopeds and quite a few nice motorcycles actually. And it only took a few little pushes and then we managed to get the car out. Mission success. Good little deed for the day. And I got it all on camera, which is cool. After a couple more stops, we finally got to our last point of the trip, the chateau that John Hopkins was renting. That guy you just saw riding away on the motorbikes was one of my friends from school. His name's Hoppo. This is the chateau he's staying in. In France. We were going to camp at a campsite tonight, but we cancelled that. To stay here, in the chateau, in France. Let me give you a tour. The swimming pool. I can't even get it all in, it's so big. And there's an annex over there, where some people are staying. It's got about three bedrooms there, three bedrooms there, a bedroom there, bedroom, 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 en suites on all of them. Silly, it's got this stream that runs all the way under the house, it comes all the way up along here. Oh, France, you finished big. I'm not being over the top here or dramatic. This is hands down probably the coolest house I've ever stayed in slash seen in my entire life. I didn't film any of the evening at the house because we were having such a lovely time with all of Hoppo's friends who we just met that evening. We had a lovely meal put on for us. Um, once again, we can't thank you guys enough for having us over to stay. These are these kind of little things that make trips like this all the more memorable and why this is probably the best trip I've been on on my motorbike. But all the little people you bump into along the way and everyone who puts you up and looks after you. That's the end of the trip. We got on our bikes, we blitzed back to Calais really early in the morning after I had a quick dip in the river. Had to have a quick dip in the river. And it was time for me and Jack to say goodbye. Hello tonight, I can't yeah. really hear you but... No you see you again, yeah? yeah. To Jack. I don't know who else I'd ride a bike with. It was a phenomenal, phenomenal trip. I don't think this was the best trip we've been on in terms of motorcycling, but it's the best trip I've ever been on with you just as a basis for holiday. The key point to this film and to this trip is 
that anyone can do it. This trip cost me and Jack less than 300 pounds each for the ferry, for the food, for the campsites, everything. Yes, we had a little bit of help along the way from family and friends. That's what makes these trips important and that's why you need to take these trips to push yourself. We, well, This is the biggest thing I've ever done in terms of independent travel. Um, with the job I'm in, we're completely catered for all the time. We're given a bus, we're told where to go, we're told what to do in some ways. And this was just jump on a motorbike and travel through Europe to an extent. Anyone can do it. So to sum up this like this this trip, this holiday as a whole, anyone can do this, anyone can go out and have the opportunity to go and do what we did, not necessarily on motorbikes, but go and travel the world while stopping you. in the vlog. No, don't put hey look, and two days later, we're back home in the UK. So magic, it's that magic. The magic of the vlog. And my bike's still there. Oh, speaking of my, I need to lock my bike. Oh.